I drop her off while I park, yeah. She's not the manager, she's the boss, period. Oh, she's the boss. That's yeah, right. yeah. Um, last year, which was the first time I was here, it's only been a year. You realize that? Uh, I didn't come equipped with blues poems. I learned. I was talking with my dad Sunday, uh, it being his 90th birthday. Uh, age is slowing him down, but not enough that he didn't decide to take a hornet's nest down all by himself. <sighs> Said it took him four days to get it down because he had to stop every afternoon and let the stings from that day heal. <sighs> oh, Dad. You know? um, there's got to be an old white guy from the suburbs of Tampa, Florida blues piece in there somewhere, but I haven't gotten around to reading, writing it yet. I was talking a couple weeks ago with uh, a Maryland poet, Liesl Emerson, who uh, is quickly becoming one of my favorite reads, and uh, like most of us, is woefully underappreciated. Something about not having an MFA. Uh, and she responded positively when I asked her if she wanted to write a blues piece for this evening. Took me by surprise because she doesn't write on demand, but this time around she did. Paper Blues. In these azure hours, she thinks of how he breathes, of how his subtle vapor is tethered to her slight smile. A mist hangs low beneath this birch. He tenderly whispers, come here, like he always does. The papery bark rustles. Minute tears go unnoticed by the fragrant air. She is made made to wonder, does he want me to rock him like a baby or does he want me to rock him like a hurricane? He meets her where the moonlight falls on the melody. She is so unaware of her own dancing desires that she finds it difficult to run this maze. She is holding herself in lockstep, fanning the fire of expectations. There is a blooming nirvana in her head and all the holy ghosts are rolling out of their graves, undead. In the corner of room of her heart, Jimmy Kimbrough's swoon rhythmically drums up the swelter, the sweat, the sweetness of all night long, long, long sex. The gauzy misunderstandings float dirt and bruises on the precipice of sound, unleashing perfect disasters and kisses that creep into bed. These shadows in the night make her think twice about this moment. This moment that makes her think twice about the tall trees in Georgia, or the lake effect snow, or the distant weight of his glorious measured words on her small, small, small life. The blue mud of love bends and bruises. Silent kisses curve the fences, leaving poetry to collect the differences. And I rose to the challenge and wrote a blues poem for this month, too. Uh, is also kind of unlike me. This is after Langston Hughes' uh, poem, As Befits a Man. When it's my time for dying, don't want a lot of women hanging around. When it's my time to look for God, won't need a crowd of women standing around. Just want to feel that one good woman hold my hand down to the ground. When I'm all done with this body, don't want to hear a crying sound. When I'm shaking off this body, won't care for moaning all around. Just want to hear one good friend laughing as they slide me in the ground. And if there's a resurrection, won't need to hear the trumpet sound. And if there's a time for rising, won't need a choir's angelic sound. Just my friend and woman saying, get your ass up off the ground. <laughs> Okay, last but not least, uh, I don't think you can do a blues thing without Steve Goodman. Uh, I'm going to read it because you don't want to hear me sing. Uh, I ain't heard you play no blues. My baby came to me this morning and she said, I'm kind of confused. She said, if me and B.B. King was both drowning, which one would you choose? I said, whoa, baby. I said, whoa, baby. I said, whoa, baby. Babe, I ain't never heard you play no blues.
Thank you.